All right, good evening. Um, my name is Courtney Lewis. Uh, I'm a regional planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. And we are the regional planning agency for Greater Boston. We provide uh, technical assistance and planning services to 101 um, cities and towns in the, in the region. I wanna welcome everyone to the second virtual community forum for the Manchester by the Sea um, Open Space and Recreation Plan or OSRP. Next slide. So I just want everyone to be aware that tonight's presentation will be recorded and posted so, uh, so that those who were not able to join us uh, this evening will have the opportunity to uh, watch it uh, later at a later time. So once again, welcome. Uh, here's a look at uh, tonight's agenda. Um, we'll start off with some brief in introductions. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what the OSRP is and why the plan is important. Uh, I'll also talk about the project timeline and some of the major phases of work. Uh, then we'll look at some of the action items on the draft uh, seven year action plan. Um, so to, um, next slide. So to start us off, uh, we'll, um, members of the Open Space and Recreation Committee and the Open Space and Recreation Advisory Committee, unmute yourselves and briefly, uh, unmute and uh, briefly introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Olga Hayes and I'm on the Conservation Commission. This is Nate DeRosier, I'm the Town Engineer. I'm Beth Heisey, I'm representing the ADA committee. Jessica Lamoff, Manchester Coastal Stream Team. Helen Bethel, Open Space Committee, at large. All right, am I missing anyone? Did we? Okay. All right. Um, so um, this uh, open space and uh, this OSRP update has been guided um, by two advisory bodies composed of uh, open space and recreation stakeholders, as well as a, a diverse group of representatives from various town departments, boards, and commissions. Um, Uh, of course, the um, uh, the public has also been a partner in helping with the development of this plan um, by providing input and feedback on uh, goals and recommendations, as well as uh, informing us of um, open space uh, parks and recreational needs. Next slide. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the project background and the timeline as well. So why is this plan important? Um, well, the Commonwealth uh, encourages each community in the state to have uh, an op open space and recreation plan or OSRP. Uh, and this plan is supposed to be updated every seven years. Um, the plan encourages protection and stewardship of vital natural resources, uh, which I've learned throughout this process is extremely important to um, the residents of Manchester. Um, uh, and then once completed uh, and approved by the Division of Conservation Services or DCS, the town becomes eligible for grant funding 
through the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And those funds can be used to uh, both acquire and improve land for conservation and recreation purposes. Next slide. So Manchester completed its last uh, OSRP in 2014. Uh, these plans follow a pretty standardized format and they have to address, uh, comply and address specific elements which are outlined in the state's open space and recreation planners workbook. Uh, this is an outline of the required sections of the plan. Uh, and tonight we'll be focusing um, more specifically on section nine, which lays out specific actions the town wants to, to uh, try and accomplish in the next seven years. Next slide. Uh, there's also a set of required maps that have to be developed for the plan that range from geological features and water resources to zoning and land use, uh, as well as scenic and unique resources. So in total, there were um, nine maps developed for this, uh, for this OSRP and they will be included in the final plan. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, another required element uh, for the plan is the ADA accessibility self-evaluation. Uh, the town um, recently updated its ADA plan uh, and portions of that plan will also be incorporated into the appendix of <clears throat> this plan. And we'll be looking at um, 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 accessibility recommendations as it relates to parks and open space uh, spaces in the town. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Next slide. So the plan has been um, has has four phases that uh, have overlapped uh, assessment, visioning, recommendations, and of course um, the the actual draft plan. Um, we are getting closer to the final stage of, of this plan, which is of course uh, um, looking uh, at finalizing the the draft report. Uh, and that that working draft um, will be posted on the town's website for public uh, comment uh, after Memorial Day. Um, the so we started things. We we initiated we initiated the the this planning process back in uh, July of 2020 uh, when both advisory bodies met. Uh, for the project kickoff. Next slide. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Next slide. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and as you can see from from this map, the the town has a, a good distribution of conservation and recreation areas. Um, Next slide. So as a first step. We, um, uh, so one of the uh, first or one of the initial steps uh, to the plan uh, was, was a meeting with town staffs and touring and assessing some of the town's parks and open spaces. Um, so we did that in August of 2020. Next slide. And uh, in that same month, we uh, we met virtually for the first OSRP community forum um, to give an introduction to the the project and the planning process. Um, we had a a live presentation via Zoom, and which was followed up with a virtual open house that was um, that people visited uh, via Qualtrics. Uh, and the purpose of that forum and open house was to gain a better understanding of uh, community values, goals, and priorities. Uh, we were also interested in um, what some of the uh, residents, what we were also interested in learning 
about uh, some of the residents' favorite parks and open spaces, as well as how they access or got to those, uh, those places. So uh, in, um, in the open house, um, we asked respondents what, what the town should prioritize as it starts to invest in its parks and open spaces. And based on the feedback, uh, these were the top five priorities, um, which were um, acquire land for conservation purposes, um, such as wildlife uh, and water supply protection, maintain existing parks and facilities, improve access to parks and facilities uh, through trails, sidewalks, and safer crossings, um, improve existing parks and facilities through playgrounds, uh, athletic fields, paving, uh, and trees and acquire land for recreational purposes, uh, for example, uh, additional athletic fields. I'll also mention that um, it, that um, the town also recently completed a an athletic fields master plan, and many of those recommendations have been um, have been. Um, incorporated into, uh, were looked at closely and incorporated into this plan as well. Next slide. Uh, in addition to the, the forum and the open house, uh, a public survey um, provided additional data. So uh, the, the OSRP community survey was available online from October through November of 2020. Uh, we had over 200 responses and 179 respondents answered all questions. Uh, some questions were optional. So uh, some of the demographic questions at the end of the survey were optional, uh, which is why we have two different uh, numbers there. Uh, so in the survey, we asked questions to help us understand uh, what parks and open spaces people use, how frequently they visited those places, and uh, what types of activities they enjoy doing while there. We also wanted to know uh, what types of facilities and amenities, facilities, amenities, and programming people enjoyed and what they wanted to see more of in the future. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, based on the survey results, the most frequently visited sites for active recreation were Singing Beach, uh, Masconomo Park, and Tux Point. Uh, and the most visited sites for passive recreation were uh, uh, the Manchester Essex Woods, um, Powderhouse Hill Reservation, Coolidge Reservation, uh, and Dexter Pond. Next slide. So in terms of future options, survey partic participants noted that they wanted to see uh, more trails for running, walking, and hiking. Uh, they wanted uh, better or greater access to the waterfront for um, water-related uh, recreational activities. Um, they wanted to see improvements be made to uh, natural areas or conservation areas, um, more picnic areas and pavilions, uh, as well as uh, community gardens. Next slide. So um, tonight we are here to discuss the seven year action plan. Um, the draft uh, action plan adapts the original uh, 2014 vision and goals. Um, and it uh, reflects some of the progress that, uh, some of the progress made on past goals. Next slide. 
So the town and uh, the um, Open Space and Recreation Committee uh, uh, have made progress on several goals and action items outlined in the 2014 OSRP. Uh, and this is a summary of some of those accomplishments. Uh, I'm not going to read every one of them off, but you can see that um, um, some of them, um, well, well, for instance, uh, the OSRP committee itself, um, that was one of the, uh, one of the more immediate uh, action items listed in the last plan, um, establishing a a permanent OSRP committee. Uh, there are also um, other um, plans and assessments that have been completed, such as, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, athletic fields master plan and the um, ADA self-evaluation transition plan. Um, there have also been uh, additional parcels that have been uh, that were acquired and added to the open space uh, inventory. Uh, so the um, there have I say that I say all that to say um, the committee in the town has made a lot of progress and scratched off a lot of action items uh, from the previous plan. Next slide. So the uh, the following seven goals were developed based on information from the 2014 OSRP, uh, public input from the first virtual community forum and open house, uh, from the OSRP community survey, uh, and consideration uh, and uh, advisement from the um, Open Space and Recreation uh, Plan Commit, the, the Open Space and Recreation Committee and the Open Space and Recreation Plan Advisory Committee. <laughs> um, uh, the goals, um, community input and geographic information uh, of the updated um, of the updated inventory in section five of the of the plan were used to develop action items for this seven year action plan. Next slide. And some of uh, some of those key actions are shown uh, in this draft action plan map. Uh, you'll be it may be a little hard to read uh, some of the text uh, on the screen, but you'll have the uh, the ability and the opportunity to uh, to view, uh, download, and provide comments uh, on the map and the action items by visiting the virtual open house uh, after this presentation. Next slide. So, in terms of the so this is. Um, so the, the way that the action plan is set up, it's set up in a matrix and um, the, the, the action plan itself is a combination of uh, both long and short term strategies for the next seven years. Uh, the action plan is arranged uh, sequential, sequentially, <clears throat> beginning with the first goal and the associated uh, objectives and actions to facilitate uh, that goal. For each action, uh, a time frame uh, has been proposed, uh, and um, we we also have identified um, uh, responsible pro parties to uh, lead the charge or to carry out the action as well as uh, identify potential funding sources for each uh, of the action items. So um, I, um, I'm not gonna, I, I, don't, I don't list every single action items here because we had uh, over 30 action items uh, in, the in the final draft of the action plan. Uh, but I do want to highlight a few of the uh, high priority action items for each goal. So goal one, 
uh, ensure the the objectives and actions identified in the open space and recreation plan are implemented and the plan is updated as needed for resubmission in 2028. And this was listed as a high priority. Next slide. Um, goal two, protect land significant to drinking water protection, wildlife habitat, natural resource protection, and climate change uh, for, for carbon storage. Um, and the two high priority, well, I, I actually think there are a few more for goal two, but these are uh, the first two action items uh, for goal two, which uh, kind of talk about identifying uh, high priority parcels uh, for acquisition and protection. Um, next slide. Uh, actions two and three, um, uh, three and four uh, also relate back to um, protection of, um, of high priority parcels. Goal three, manage existing town owned or town managed open space parcels uh, for the purposes of safe and enjoyable public access and protection of natural resources and wildlife habitat. So goals two and three uh, are closely related, but not necessarily the same. And uh, there were two high priority action items for this goal as well. Next slide. Goal four was the only goal that didn't have any high priority action items. Uh, and goal four was promote awareness, enjoyment, and stewardship of Manchester's open space parcels and natural resources through outreach and education. Uh, and this talks a lot about uh, working with, uh, partnering with uh, local, um, local non nonprofits and uh, other uh, local stakeholders to um, to promote the town's uh, natural resources and conservation areas. Next slide. Goal five, identify the town's recreation needs and create action, action plans to address those needs. Um, Again, a lot of um, a lot of the recommendations listed here are also um, also correspond to the athletic uh, fields master plan. Uh, so, making improvements to uh, some of the um, athletic fields, also looking at um, making uh, sites more accessible for um, people of all abilities. Um, and also partnering with other uh, local uh, and municipal departments to um, to create uh, healthy and safe um, environments uh, throughout the community. Next slide. Goal six: promote the use and improvement of town-owned waterfront resources for the purposes of water related uh, activities. Uh, so this talks about um, um, creating more, um, better access points to the town's uh, waterfront uh, and um, some of the, um, and, and also making them more accessible for people of all abilities. Next slide. And uh, goal seven, continue to advocate for accessibility by ensuring uh, that town officials, boards, and committees are aware of universal design standards and ADA requirements, and that uh, ADA considerations are incorporated into uh, existing and future town projects. So um, uh, making sure uh, successful implementation of the town's ADA transition plan and um, also looking at ways to incorporate um, accessibility into any uh, future improvements to parks and open space. 
All right, next slide. So now we're gonna uh, pause. Um, and Christian, if you want, uh, you can stop sharing just for a second. Uh, and I'll, I'll see if there are any questions um, from anyone. Okay. All right. Um, so, Christian, uh, I believe if you sh if you can share the screen once again, uh, it'll bring us to the link um, for the uh, forum, the uh, virtual for um, the virtual open house. Uh, so that has been pasted in the um, that link has been paste it in the chat box and uh, it will also this link will also be made available on the town's uh, website um, next slide and so just some quick instructions for accessing uh, this information Okay, I, I see your um, I see your comment in the chat box, Sandy. And um, if you give me just a second, um, well, actually, you're unmuted. So, do you want to? 